What's up, everyone, and welcome to this week's Cybersecurity Weekly, where we review the security events that happened in the last week. As always, I've broken the stories down in the timeline, and there's a list of the stories with time markers in the description below. So you can click on any of those time markers to jump around to any story you want. If you find my work valuable, of course, I ask you to hit the like button and share this episode with anyone you know who could benefit from this information. Lastly, if you have not already, please also consider subscribing to my channel. An Iranian group of hackers known as Moses Staff had seized control of dozens of Israeli CCTV cameras. The hack was known to the authorities that did nothing to stop it, reported the Times of Israel, which had access to a preview of a full investigative report. In a preview of a full investigative report set to be aired on last Tuesday, the Khan Public Broadcaster said officials did not take action to secure the cameras despite their knowledge of the activities of the group known as Moses Staff, reported the Times of Israel. According to Khan, the hackers gained access to the CCTV cameras and were able to control them from a le- for a lengthy period. In 2021, the group published footage on its Telegram channel of the surroundings of Israel Rafael Defense Contractor Factory in Haifa, as well as footage from cameras throughout Israeli cities of Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. The group published several videos, including footage of an arms facility and, and of a terror attack in Jerusalem in November. An Iranian hacker group calling itself this Moses Staff published documentation showing CCTV footage of one of the bombings that happened in Jerusalem Wednesday morning. Microsoft Threat Intelligence Center uh, researchers discovered a new variant of the ZeroBot botnet, a.k.a. Zero Stressor, that was improved with the capabilities to target more Internet of Things devices. The IT giant is tracking this cluster of threat activity as Dev1061. What a sexy name. ZeroBot operators are offering the botnet as a malware as a service model. One domain, zerostressor.com, with links to the bot was among the 48 domains associated with the DDoS for hire services seized by the FBI in December. The ZeroBot botnet first appeared in the wild in November 2022, targeting devices running on Linux operating system. The Go-based botnet spreads by exploiting two dozen security vulnerabilities in the Internet of Things devices and other applications. Most recent variant spotted by Microsoft spreads by exploiting vulnerabilities in Apache and Apache Spark, CVE 2021-42013 and CVE 2022-33981, respectively, and also supports new DDoS attack capabilities. The ZeroBot botnet can propagate through brute force attacks on vulnerable devices with insecure configurations that use default or weak credentials. Experts observe that the bot attempting to gain access to the device by using a combination of eight common usernames and 130 passwords for IoT devices over SSH and Telnet on ports 23 and 2323. The researchers identified numerous SSH and Telnet connection attempts on default ports 22 and 23, as well as attempts to open ports and connect to them by port knocking on ports 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 and 2323. ZeroBot was also observed, spreading by exploiting dozens of vulnerabilities. The version ZeroBot 1.1 includes several new flaws. Since the release of ZeroBot 1.1, the malware operators have removed CVE 2018-12613, a PHP MyAdmin vulnerability that could allow threat actors to view or execute files. Microsoft researchers have also identified that previous reports have used the vulnerability ID 0. 32906 for CVE 2018 GPON for CVE 2018 1061, and D Link for CVE 2016 20, uh, 2017. And that CVE 2020-7209 was mislabeled as CVE 2017-17106, and CVE 2022-42013 was mislabeled as CVE 2021-42013. Recent analysis published by Microsoft. Researchers also discovered that ZeroBot propagates by compromising devices with known flaws that are not included in the malware binary, such as a command injection vulnerability in Tenda GPON AC1200 routers, which is tracked to CVE 2022-30023. ZeroBot targets multiple architectures, including i386, AMD64, ARM, ARM64, MIPS, MIPS64, MIPS64LE, MIPSLE, PPC64, PPC64LE, RASCV64, and S390X. The bot is saved using the file name Zero. The continuous evolution and rapid addition of new capabilities in the latest ZeroBot version underscores the urgency of implementing comprehensive security measures. Concludes Microsoft that provides um, some recommendations to protect devices and networks against the the threat of ZeroBot. 
On December 21st, the online sports betting company BetMGM disclosed a data breach. While threat actors offered to, uh, for sale a database containing the information of 1,586,000 uh, 569,310 million, that doesn't make any sense, it's 1,569,310 BetMGM customers. We breached BetMGM Casino database current as of November 2022. The database is inclusive of every BetMGM cu Casino customer, over 1.5 million as of November 2022 from MI and J on ON, PV, and WV. So I guess that's Michigan, New Jersey, Ontario, I don't know what PV is, and West Virginia. Any customer that has that has placed a casino wager, including uh, is included in this database, reads the announcement published by the seller on breach forums. The attackers had access to the personal information of some patrons, including name, contact information such as postal address, email address, and telephone number, date of birth, hashed social security number, account identifiers such as player ID and screen name, and information relating to transactions with. Um, MGM. According to the notice published by the company on its website, the compromised information varied by patron. They call them patrons? The company launched an investigation into the security breach and hired leading security experts to determine the scope of the incident. But MGM learned of the data breach on November 28, 2022 and dated it back to May 2022. The company pointed out that there is no evidence that patron passwords or account funds were accessed. Our online operations were not compromised. We are coordinating with law enforcement and taking steps to further enhance our security. We have learned that certain vet MGM patron records were obtained in an unauthorized manner. Reads a statement published by the company on its website. We're coordinating with law enforcement and taking steps to further enhance our security. We recommend patrons remain alert for any unsolicited communications regarding their personal information and review their accounts for suspicious activity. We take our obligation to safeguard personal information very seriously and have arranged... Uh, to offer affected patrons credit monitoring and identity restoration services for two years at no cost to them. The reference guides below, uh, there's a guide that provides information on steps you can take to protect your information. The company recommends patrons change passwords and remain vigilant for any unsolicited communications regarding their personal information and review their accounts for suspicious activity. The company is offering, again, impacted patrons two years of free credit monitoring and identity restoration services at no cost to them. A threat actor claims they have obtained data of 400 million Twitter users and is attempting to sell it. The seller claims the database is private. He provided a sample of 1,000 records as proof of claims, which included the private information of, of prominent users such as Donald Trump Jr., Brian Krebs, and many more. The seller, a member of data breach forums named Ryushi, claims the data was scraped via a vulnerability. It includes emails and phone numbers of celebrities, politicians, companies, normal users, and a lot of OG and special usernames. The seller is also inviting Twitter and Elon Musk to buy the data to avoid GDPR lawsuits. Twitter or Elon Musk, if you're reading this, you are already risking a GDPR fine over 5.4 million breach Im uh, imaging, the fine of 400 million users breach source. Makes no sense, but that's what he wrote. Your best option to avoid paying 276 million USD dollars in GDPR breach fines like Facebook did due to 533 million users being scraped is to buy this data exclusively, reads the advertisement. The seller also announced that, uh, that the sale is covered by the escrow service offered by the breached form administrators, Pom Pom Perin. Ireland Data Protection Commission on Friday opened a probe into Twitter over an August data breach was reportedly impacted 5.4 million Twitter users. The data is increasingly more likely to be valid and was probably obtained from an API vulnerability, enabling the threat actor to query any email, phone, and or any email or phone and retrieve a Twitter profile. This is extremely similar to the Facebook 533 million database that um, originally reported uh, about in 2021. And again, resulted in this $275 million fine to Meta, explained Alan Gall, co-founder of threat intelligence firm Hudson Rock. The Irish Data Protection Commission on Friday again, and we're saying this again for some reason, announced an investigation into an August incident that sold the contact records of 5.4 million Twitter users dumped on the same form favored by Ryoshi. Trend Micro researchers have spotted a new variant of the Agenda Ransomware, a.k.a. Killin, that is written in Rust. The move follows the decision of other ransomware gangs like Hive, Black Hat, RansomX, and Luna of rewriting their ransomware into Rust. The main reasons to rewrite malware in Rust is to have lower antivirus detection rates compared to malware written in most common languages and to target multiple architectures. 
The Killin Ransomware as a Service Group uses a double extortion model, with most of the victims in the manufacturing and IT industries. The researchers estimated that combined revenue surpasses $550 million. I'm assuming that's the combined revenue made by Killin. The ransomware was originally written in Go language and was employed in attacks aimed at healthcare and education sectors in countries like Thailand and Indonesia. Recently, we found a sample of the Agenda ransomware written in Rust language and, obje- and detected as ransomware.132.agenda.thiefbb, raised the analysis published by Trend Micro. The actress customized previous ransomware binaries for the intended victim through the use of confidential information such as leaked accounts and unique company IDs as the appended file extension. The Rust variant has also been seen using intermittent encryption, one of the emerging tactics that threat actors use today for faster encryption and detection evasion. Upon executing malware, the Rust binary prompts an error requiring a password to be passed as an argument. This command line feature was also implemented in the Golang version of the Agenda ransomware. Passing the password parameter in conjunction with a dummy password, Agenda Pass, um, the ransomware starts its malicious activity by terminating various processes and servers. I'm assuming databases and backups and antivirus softwares, etc. The ransomware uses intermittent encryption to speed up the encryption process by partially encrypting the files depending on the values of certain flags. This tactic also allows for avoiding detections based on the analysis of read-write file operations. It also embedded the dash n dash p fast skip and step flags on its configurations, which are not present in the Golang variant configuration and only used via command line argument. Upon further analysis, we have learned that these flags are used for intimate encryption continues the analysis. This tactic enables the ransomware to encrypt the victim files faster by partially encrypting the files depending on the values of the flags. The sample analyzed by the experts adds the extension MMXRVIXLVLV to the file names of the encrypted files then drops the ransom note in every directory. Unlike past variants, the Rust version of the Agenda ransomware is able to terminate the Windows app info processes and disable user account control. Trend Micro reported that Rust variants have an allocated space for adding accounts in their configuration to be used mostly for privilege escalation. Hackers are actively exploiting a critical vulnerability track to CVE 2022-45359 with a CVSS version 3 score of 9.8, affecting the WordPress plugin with WooCommerce Gift Cards Premium. The YITH WooCommerce Gift Cards Premium plugin allows websites of online stores to sell gift cards, a WordPress plugin used on over 50,000 websites. The CVE 2022-453-59 flaw is an arbitrary file upload issue that can allow an unauthenticated attacker to upload files to vulnerable sites, including web shells that provide full access to the site. The issue was discovered on November 22, 2022, and was addressed with the release of version 3.20.0. Due to the presence of a lot of websites that are still using vulnerable versions of the plugin, threat actors are exploring the flaw in attacks in the wild to upload backdoors on the e-stores. The WordPress Threat Intelligence team has been tracking exploits targeting a critical severity arbitrary file upload vulnerability in YITH WooCommerce Gift Cards Premium, a plugin again with over 50,000 installations according to the vendor, reported WordFence. This allows attackers to place a backdoor, obtain remote code execution, and take over the site. The researchers were able to reverse engineer the exploit and discover that the issue lies in the import actions from settings panel function, which runs on the admin init hook. The hook runs for any page in the slash wp dash admin directory and allows to trigger functions that run on it as an unauthenticated attacker by sending a request to WordPress admin admin post PHP. The experts noticed that the import actions form settings panel function also lacks a capability check and a CSRF check. An unauthenticated attacker can send post requests to um, WP admin admin post.php using the certain parameters to upload a malicious PHP executable on the site. Since the import actions for, from settings panel function also lacks a capability check and a CSRF check, it is trivial for an attacker to simply send a request containing a page parameter set to YITH underscore WooCommerce underscore gift cards underscore panel, um, a YWGC underscore safe submit field parameter set to importing gift cards, and a payload in the file imports as CSV file parameter, continues to report. Since the function also does not perform any file type checks, Any file type, including executable PHP files, can be uploaded. The experts added that it is possible to discover the attacks by analyzing the logs and checking unexpected post requests to WP admin admin post PHP for unknown IP addresses. Below are, so there are basically did a list of some of the files uploaded by threat actors and attacks analyzed by WordFence. 
um, the most of the attacks observed by WordPress originated from 103.138 to 108.15, with 19,604 attacks against 10,936 different sites and 188.66.0.135 IP addresses. Um, with 1,220 attacks against 928 sites. So check your logs for those um, IP addresses. Security researcher Resolver announced the discovery of hard-coded credentials, CVE 2022-40602 in Zyxel LTE 3301-M209 LTE indoor routers. In previous research, the expert discovered a Telnet backdoor in D-Link DWR 921, which is also present in the Zyxel LTE 3301-M209 as well. The researcher analyzed the Commander ELF focusing on the, AM, the Amit star functions that were containing the backdoor in D-Link routers. Unlike the D-Link analysis, the researcher uh, has no physical access to the device and attempted to retrieve the password from config. The former is basically a merge of three sections. The LZMA section is the kernel at whatever that address is. The root FS and at, uh, is at the, that um, address and the WW content, wrote the expert. Inside the last squash FS, there is a censored file, which is which contains um, at 0x10 the Zlib magic bytes. Despite... Um, the fact that he did not find Telnet credentials, he discovered something which looks like a backdoor in the web UI. The same as before, an unpacked the config bat, uh, dot dat is going to contain the Telnet login password, states the expert. Let's put things together. On Zyxel LTE 3301, we have two ways to own the device. Owners of impacted devices have to upgrade them with the latest firmware release as soon as possible. The expert and the Zyxel PSIRT decided to avoid disclosing the credentials and to uh, to prevent massive exploitation in the wild until as many people as possible install the update and the fix. German multinational industrial and engineering and steel production giant Thyssen Krupp AG announced that the material service division and corporate headquarters were hit by a cyber attack. This time, the company has yet to disclose the type of attack that hit its systems and no cyber criminal group has yet to claim responsibility for the attack. The company spokesman declared that there are no indications of a data breach. Thyssen Krupp is currently the target of a cyber attack, presumably by organized crime, and that at the present time, no damage has been done, nor are there any indications that data has been stolen or modified, a spokesperson told Agents France Presse. At the present time, no damage has been done, nor are there any indications that data has been stolen or modified for the third time. This isn't the first attack suffered by the company. In, tw in 2012, that's a long time ago, the company was targeted by another cyber attack that was classified as heavy and exceptional quality. Maybe for 2012. In 2016, alleged Asian threat actors targeted Thyssen Krupp, or Tyson Krupp to steal company secrets. The investigators speculated the attack was carried out by a group of professional hackers from Southeast Asia that were interested in the technological know-how and research activities of the company. On December 28, 2020, Thyssen Group Materials Group of companies based in the U.S. and Canada were breached by the NetWalker Ransomware Group. The hackers managed to access sensitive HR information and documents about the company, current and former employees. The confidential information accessed by the attackers included the social security number and bank account information of employees. In August 2020, Tyson Group System Engineering was hit by the Mount Locker Ransomware Group. Um, in January 2021, Tyson Group subsidiary was a victim of a ransomware cyber attack that caused the encryption of its servers and employee workstations. While they have a long history of getting hacked, maybe they need to step up their cybersecurity budget, huh? In December 2021, Google announced it has taken down the infrastructure operated by the Glupteba botnet. It also sued Russian nationals Dmitry Starovikov and Alexander Filipov for creating and operating the botnet. The blockchain-enabled botnet has been active since at least 2011. Researchers estimated that the Glupteba botnet has compromised more than 1 million Windows PCs around the world as of December 2021. The botnet was involved in stealing users' credentials and data, mining cryptocurrency, abusing victims' resources, and setting up proxies to funnel other people's traffic, internet traffic, through infected machines and routers. Botnet operators used to spread the malware via cracked or pirated software and paper install schemes. Now researchers from Nozomi Networks reported that the Glubdebo botnet is back, and researchers reported a surge in the number of infections worldwide. Experts noticed a significant increase of malicious Bitcoin addresses, along with the increase in Tor hidden servers being used as command and control servers. The researchers observed a new campaign that started in June 2022 after the Google lawsuit and is still ongoing. Nozomi analyzed the entire blockchain to discover the command and control domains used by the botnet. The researchers also downloaded over 1,500 Glupteba samples from VirusTotal to track the wallet addresses used by the operators. Researchers believe that at least 
five different merchants and exchanges were used to fund the Glyptepa addresses since 2019. The experts identified 15 Glyptepa Bitcoin addresses over four years, likely involved in four different campaigns. For this campaign, um, we were, or they were, not able to find any samples for three of the uh, of the addresses they gathered. They believe these addresses are not made for testing as they distribute some domains found in other Bitcoin addresses for which they found samples. Reads the post published by Nozomi. In addition, there was a tenfold increase in Tor hidden service being used as command and control service since the 2021 campaign. The experts used passive DNS records to uncover Glyptepa domains and hosts and analyze the latest set of TLS certificates used by the bot uh, to figure out the inf uh, infrastructure used by the attackers. One of the addresses had 11 transactions and was used by 1,197 samples, with the last seen activity reported on November 8, 2022. Even with Google winning a favorable ruling recently, we hoped it would have inflicted a severe blow to Glyptepa operators or operations, but almost a year later, we could say... It most likely did not. Indeed, it took Lepteba about six months to build a new campaign from scratch and distribute it in the wild, and this time on a much larger scale, concludes the report. For defenders and responders, we strongly suggest blocking blockchain-related domains like blockchain.info, but also Klepteba known command and control domains in your environment. We also recommend uh, monitoring DNS logs and keeping the antivirus software up to date to help prevent a potential Klepteba infection. So in August, password management software firm LastPass disclosed a security breach. Threat actors had access to portions of the company development environment through a single compromised developer account and stole portions of source code and some proprietary technical information. In response to the incident, the company deployed containment and mitigation measures and implemented additional enhanced security measures. The company engaged a leading cybersecurity and forensics firm to investigate the incident. At the time of disclosure, it confirmed that data breach did not compromise users' master passwords. In an update published on Thursday, the company revealed that threat actors obtained personal information belonging to customers, including encrypted password vaults. The company discovered that an unknown threat actor accessed a cloud-based storage environment leveraging information obtained from the August security incident. The attackers used the info access to target another employee and obtain credentials and keys which were used to access and encrypt some storage volumes within the cloud-based storage service. The update highlights that the cloud storage service accessed by the threat actors is physically separate from the production environment. Once hacker, hackers obtained the cloud storage access key and dual storage container decryption keys, the attackers copied information from backup that contained basic customer account information and related metadata. Copied data include company names and usernames, billing addresses, email addresses, telephone numbers, and the IP addresses from which customers were accessing the LastPass service. The threat actor also copied a backup of customer vault data from the encrypted storage container, which is stored in a proprietary binary format. The backup contains both unencrypted data, like website URLs, and 256-bit AES encrypted sensitive, i.e. website usernames and password secure notes, and form-filled data. The threat actor was also able to copy a backup of customer vault data from the encrypted storage container, with its stored, uh, which is stored in a proprietary binary format that contains both unencrypted data, such as website URLs, as well as fully encrypted sensitive fields, such as website usernames and password secure notes um, and form-filled data, reads the update published by the company. These encrypted fields remain secure with 256-bit AES encryption and can only be decrypted with a unique encryption key derived from each user's master password using zero-knowledge architecture. As a reminder, the master password is never known to LastPass and is not stored or maintained by LastPass. The encryption and decryption of data is performed only on the local LastPass client. Security researchers at Reversing Labs have discovered a new malicious package named Sentinel-1 on the Python package index PyPy repository that impersonates a legitimate software development kit for Sentinel-1. The malicious package was first uploaded to the repository on December 11, 2022. In just two days, attackers published 20 versions of the malicious project. The project, or the package, claims to offer access to Sentinel-1 APIs, but it actually contains malicious code to harvest sensitive information from development systems, including credentials, configuration data, and SSH keys. The package is part of a malicious campaign tracked by Reversing Labs' Sentinel Sneak. According to the researchers, the package is a copy of the actual Sentinel-1 SDK Python client, and the threat actor added the malicious functionality to its code. The package appears to be a fully functional Sentinel-1 client, but contains a malicious backdoor, Reversing Labs' threat researcher, Carlo Zanke discovered, reads the analysis published by Reversing Labs. The malicious functionality in the library does not execute upon installation, but waits to be called on programmatically bef uh, called on programmatically before activating a possible effort to avoid detection. Reversing Labs is calling this campaign Sentinel Sneak. 
Threat actors behind the Sentinel sneak campaign also released two additional packages named Sentinel-1 SDK and Sentinel-1 SDK without a dash with similar functionalities. The fake Sentinel-1 package contains API.py files that contains the code to steal and exfiltrate data uh, uploaded uh, to it or and uploading it or uploading it. Uh, to the IP address, then 5425418922 or 27. Uh, we see the malicious code for collecting information about shell command execution history, as well as the contents of the SSH folder containing SSH keys and configuration information, including access credentials and secrets related to Git, Kubernetes, and AWS services. Continues the post. The code likewise performs a directory listing of the root directory. The analysis of the changes between the versions of the malicious module revealed that threat actors modified it to improve the data collection algorithm and make it work on multiple platforms. Threat actors published five additional malicious packages with a similar name. These modules did not contain API.py files with malicious functionality, a circumstance that suggests they were used for testing purposes. The experts discovered that the malicious versions of the package have been downloaded over 1,000 times on PyPy. The packages were published between December 8th and 11th, 2022. Reversing Labs reported their findings to the PyPy security team on December 15th, 2022. The Sentinel-1 was notified on December 16th, 2022. France Privacy Watchdogs find, finds m millions? Huh? Finds Microsoft Ireland subsidiary for using advertising cookies without the explicit consent of its customers. The So 60 million. The practice violated the European data protection law. The CNIL received a complaint relating to the conditions for the deposit of cookies on Bing.com and, invest and investigated the issue um, in September 2020 and May 2021. Microsoft did not implement for the home page of the Bing search engine a mechanism to refuse cookies as easily as accepting them. CNIL found that when a user visited the site, cookies were placed on their terminal without their consent while they were pursuing in particular an advertising objective. She also noticed the absence of a button allowing to refuse the deposit of cookies as easily as to accept it. Reads the announcement published by the Commission uh, Nationale de Informatique et des Libertés, I guess. Consequently, the restricted committee, um, the restricted committee, the body of the CNIL responsible for pronouncing uh, the sanctions, sanctioned the company Microsoft Ireland or Operations Limited with a fine of 60 million euros. The restricted committee is also ordering that Microsoft collects on the Bing.com website within three month, months the consent of persons residing in France before filling um, f filling on their terminal cookies and trackers for, uh, for advertising purposes. The sentence was written weird for me. Otherwise, the company will be sanctioned with a penalty of 60,000 euros per day of delay. Microsoft told the Wall Street Journal that it has already addressed the issue by implementing an option to reject it after advertising cookies. Microsoft has disclosed details of a now-fixed security vulnerability dubbed Achilles, CB2022-42821, with a CVSS uh, score of 5.5, in Apple macOS that could be exploited by threat actors to bypass the gatekeeper security feature. The Apple gatekeeper is designed to protect OS X users by performing a number of checks before allowing an app to run. In fact, you'll not be able to execute code that wasn't signed by an Apple developer. You will not be able to run apps that weren't downloaded from Apple Store if the device is not jailbroken jailbreaked or jailbroken of course the flaw was discovered on july 27 2022 by jonathan barr or from microsoft it is a logic issue that was addressed with improved checks on july 27 2022 microsoft discovered this vulnerability in mac os that can allow attackers to bypass application execution restrictions imposed by apple gatekeeper security mechanism designed to ensure only trusted apps run on mac devices we developed the proof of concept exploit to demonstrate the vulnerability which we call achilles reads the post published by Microsoft. Microsoft researchers explain that Gatekeeper bypasses can be used by threat actors to install malware on macOS systems. The experts pointed out that Apple lockdown mode introduced in July does not prevent the exploitation of the Achilles bug. The Achilles vulnerability relies on the access control lists, or ACLs, permission uh, model to add extremely restricted permissions to a downloaded file, like everyone deny write, uh, write attribute, write extra attribute, um, right security, CHO, to block the Safari browser from setting the qu uh, quarantine extended attribute. South Korea's spy agency, the National Intelligence Service, estimated that North Korea linked threat actors have stolen an estimated $1.5 trillion dollars or trillion won, $1.5 trillion would be a lot, won, which is $1.2 billion in cryptocurrency and other virtual assets in the past five years. 
According to the spy agency, more than half the crypto assets, about 800 billion won or 626 million, have been stolen this year alone, reported the Associated Press. The government of Pyongyang focuses on crypto hacking to fund its military program following harsh UN sanctions. South Korea's main spy agency, the National Intelligence Service, said North Korea capacity to steal digital assets is considered among the best in the world because of the country's focus on cybercrime since the UN economic sanctions were toughened in 2017 in response to its nuclear missile tests, reported the AP agency. North Korea cannot export its products due to the UN sanctions imposed in 2016 and uh, 2017, and the impact on its economy is dramatic. The NIS added that more than 100 billion won, 78 million of the total stolen funds, came from South Korea. Cybersecurity intelligence experts believe that attacks aimed at the cryptocurrency industry will continue to increase next year. National intelligence service experts believe that North Korea linked app groups will focus on the theft of South Korean technologies and confidential information on South Korean foreign policy and national security. Data published by the National Intelligence Services Agency confirms a report published by South Korean media outlet Chosun early this year that revealed North Korean threat actors have stolen around 1.7 billion dollars worth of cryptocurrency for multiple exchanges during the past five years. According to local media, U.S. federal prosecutors believe that North Korean government considers the North Korean government considers cryptocurrency a long-term investment and it is amassing crypto funds through illegal activities. In a classified report cited by Cho Soon, the U.S. National Intelligence Service found that North Korea was financing its priority uh, policies such as nuclear missile uh, development through cybercrime. Government experts noticed that nation-state actors are not immediately chasing or cashing out all the stolen crypto to create a crypto fund reserve. Citing the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, the media reported that all banks in the world are being targeted by North Korea cyber attacks. It also reported that North Korea is committing cyber crimes such as stealing defense secrets from major powers, using ransomware to steal funds, hijacking cryptocurrencies, and laundering criminal proceeds into cryptocurrencies, reads a post published by Cho Soon. Then, citing the results of investigations by the United States and the UN, UN Security Council, it is estimated that the Kim Jong-un regime fraudulent, fraudulent profits from cybercrimes have already reached $2.3 billion. Okta revealed that its private GitHub repositories were hacked this month. The news was first reported by Bluepeak Computer, which had access to confidential email communication sent by Okta. According to the notification, threat actors have stolen Okta source code. As soon as Okta learned of the possible suspicious access, we promptly placed temporary restrictions on access to Okta GitHub repositories and suspended all GitHub integrations with third-party applications, raised the email sent by the company. We have since reviewed all recent access to Okta software repositories hosted by GitHub to understand the scope of the exposure, reviewed all recent commits to Okta software repositories hosted with GitHub to validate the integrity of our code, and rotated GitHub credentials. We have also notified law enforcement. The security breach was discovered by GitHub um, earlier this month when the company noticed suspicious access to Okta code repositories. Upon investigation, we have concluded that such access was used to copy Okta code repositories, writes David Bradbury, the Okta chief security officer, in the mail. According to the notification, intruders did not gain access to its service or customer data. The incident is related to the Okta Workforce Identity Cloud code repositories and doesn't impact Auth O customer identity um, cloud products. The company announced to have taken steps to prevent threat actors um, can use the stolen code to access company or customer environments. In March 2022, the Lapsus Extortion Group has stolen sensitive data from Okta, including customer data, and published screenshots of the stolen data on its Telegram channel. The company launched an investigation into the claims of a data breach, while the CEO, CEO Todd McKinnon, confirmed that in the late January 2022, the company detected an attempt to compromise the account of a third-party customer support engineer working for uh, one of its sub-processors. I have to ask my, myself the question, does any, does any company or any employee at a company like a CEO have any risk if their company has is gets hacked like this as often as it does? Shouldn't a CEO be fired if this happens under his watch, not just the CTO or anybody um, in IT who's responsible for this? I don't, I, don't, I don't quite understand, but let's move on. The company revealed that the security breach impacted 2.5% of its customers, approximately 375, but pointed out that they have no action that should do that they need to do. The laptop extortion group compromised the laptop of one of its support engineers that allowed them to reset passwords for some of its customers. Investigators discovered that the attackers had access to the laptop for five days, starting from January 16, 2022. 
Cisco has updated multiple security advisories to warn of the active exploitation of several old vulnerabilities impacting its products. The bugs, some of which are rated as critical in severity, impact Cisco iOS, NXOS, and Hyperflex software. Um, the critical vulnerabilities being exploited in the attacks in the wild were listed in the article. Organizations are recommended to review the Cisco advisories and apply security patches released by the company. Play ransomware operators target exchange servers using a new exploit chain dubbed OWASRF by CrowdStrike that bypasses Microsoft mitigations for proxy not shell vulnerabilities. They impact exchange server 2013, 2016, and 2019, and an authenticated attacker can trigger them to elevate privileges to run PowerShell in the context of the system and gain arbitrary or remote code execution on vulnerable systems servers. Microsoft addressed both vulnerabilities with the release of Patch Tuesday updates for November 2022 security updates. The exploit was used by attackers to bypass URL rewrite mitigations for the auto-discover endpoint implemented by Microsoft in response to proxy not shell. Then, the ransomware gang leveraged legitimate P-Link and any desk executables to maintain access and perform um, anti-forensics techniques on the Microsoft Exchange server in an attempt to hide their activity. CrowdStrike recently discovered a new exploit method called OWASRF, consisting of CVE 2022-41081 and CVE 2022-41082 to achieve remote code execution through Outlook Web Access. The new exploit method bypasses URL rewrite mitigations for the auto-discover endpoint provided by Microsoft in response to Proxy Not Shell, reads the analysis published by CrowdStrike. After initial access via this new exploit method, the threat actor leveraged legitimate P-Link and any desk executables to maintain access and performed anti-forensic techniques on the Microsoft Exchange server in an attempt to hide their activity. In the attacks investigated by the experts, the threat actor cleared Windows event logs on affected backend exchange servers to prevent investigation on the PowerShell commands used by the attackers. CrowdStrike security researchers were working to develop proof of concept code in an attempt to reproduce the one used in recent um, play ransomware attacks. Simultaneously, a researcher from Huntress Labs discovered an attacker tooling via an open repository and shared it via, through a mega upload link. Initial access proxy not shell bits admin to download tooling blah 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 installed screen connect ID um, URL instance CRM blah 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 deployed mimikatz crawled and saved their tools. The leaked tools included a Python script pocktapi. That, that when executed, led CrowdStrike researchers to replicate the logs generated in a recent play ransomware attack. CrowdStrike researchers Dre Agha replicated the exploit method attack on exchange systems that were not patched against Proxy Not Shell, but could not replicate the attack on patch systems. Organizations are recommended to apply Microsoft November 2022 security updates immediately, disable remote PowerShell for non-administrative users and to deploy endpoint detection and response tools. Researchers from Trend Micro have uncovered a Raspberry Robin worm campaign targeting telecommunications and government office systems across Latin America, Australia, and Europe. The campaign has been active since at least September 2022. Most of the infections have been observed in Argentina with 34.8%, followed by Australia with 23.2%. We found samples of the Raspberry Robin malware spreading in telecommunications and government office systems beginning September, reads a report published by Trend Micro. The main payload itself is packed with more than 10 layers of obfuscation and is capable of delivering a fake payload once it detects sandboxing and security analytics tools. Raspberry Robins is a Windows worm discovered by cybersecurity researchers from Red Canary. The malware propagates through removable USB devices. The malicious code uses Windows Installer to reach out to QNAP associated domains and download a malicious DLL. The malware uses Tor exit nodes as a backup command and control infrastructure. The malware was first spotted in September 2021. The experts observed a, it targeting organizations in the technology and manufacturing industries. Initial access is typically through infected removable drives, often USB devices. The malware uses command.exe to read and execute a file stored on the infected um, external drive. It leverages MSI execute.exe for external uh, network communication to a rogue domain used as command and control to download and install a DLL library file. Then MSI execute.exe launches a legitimate Windows utility, FOD helper.exe, which in turn runs a run DLL 32.exe to execute a malicious command. Experts pointed out that processes launched by a by a FOD helper.exe run will with elevated administrative privileges without requiring a user account control prompt. So the processes launched by the FOD helper.exe run with elevated administrative privileges without requiring a user account control prompt. 
The worm was attributed by IBM to the cybercrime gang Evil Corp. However, it is used by multiple threat actors to deliver malicious payloads such as the Clop ransomware. The analysis conducted by Trend Micro revealed that the main malware routine contains both the real and fake payloads. The fake payload is loaded once the malicious code detects sandboxing tools. <laughs> Meanwhile, the real payload remains obfuscated under packing layers and subsequently connects to the Tor network. Once installed, the malware contacts the hard-coded onion, .onion address using an embedded custom Tor client designed to communicate with the real payload using shared memory and to await further commands. Upon Starting the Tor client process, the real payload randomly uses a name of a legitimate Windows process like dllhost.exe, redserver32.exe, and run dll32.exe. The real routine of the malware runs in a specialized Windows session known as Session Zero. Trend Micro experts discovered multiple similarities with privilege, escalation, and an anti-debugging technique implemented by Lockbit ransomware leading to these hypotheses. The Russian linked, uh, linked Gamerodan apt group, aka Shuckworm, aka Actinium, aka Armageddon, aka Primitive Bear, aka UIC0010, aka Trident Ursa, and probably a ton of other AKAs, is behind a failed attack against a large petroleum refining company in a NATO member state earlier amid the invasion of the Ukraine. Gamerodan historically focuses on Ukraine, but it was also behind cyber espionage campaigns against NATO countries. The attack against the petroleum refinery took place on August 30th, 2022, in line with these efforts to target allied governments during a review of their IOCs, they identified an unsuccessful attempt to compromise a large petroleum refining company within a NATO-membered nation on August 30th, reported Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks Unit 42 researchers discovered more than 500 new domains and 200 malware samples attributed to Gamerdon app since the beginning of the invasion. The experts also observed multiple shifts in its tactics over the past 10 months. Experts pointed out the Gamerdon group has used the fast flux DNS technique to increase the resilience of the infrastructure from law enforcement takedown and make hard um, deny listing of the IP addresses associated with it. Infrastructure using fast flux DNS rotates through many IPs daily, and each IP was used for a short time. Since June 2022, the app group used several other techniques to improve the efficacy of its campaigns. Gamerdon phishing attacks used an a.html file delivered as an attachment or via embedded links. These HTML files contain Base64 encoded RAR file archives that in turn contain a malicious link file. Once a user clicks on these link files, they use the Microsoft HTML application mshta.exe to download additional files via URL, reads the report. Once open, this link shortcut uses <coughs> mshta.exe to contact some admau whatever org URL via a command line argument. Trident Ursa appears to be using various techniques to limit who can access this URL. As other researchers have highlighted, Trident Ursa appears to be using uh, geo-blocking in order to limit downloads of this file to specific geographic locations. Over the past three months, experts observed Gamerdon using two different droppers. The first one is a 7-zip self-extracting archive, and the second one is an executable usually named MyFile.exe. Trident Ursa remains an agile and adaptive app that does not use overly sophisticated or complex techniques in its operations, the researchers concluded. In most cases, they rely on publicly available tools and scripts along with a significant amount of obfuscation, as well as, as routine phishing attempts to successfully execute their operations. Echo, a global shoe manufacturer and retailer, exposed millions of documents. Not only could anyone have modified the data, but the server misconfiguration sev uh, severity likely left the company open to an attack that could have affected customers all over the world. It, uh, no, it no use carrying. It's no use carrying an umbrella if your shoes are leaking, an old Irish proverb says. Words that sum up the recent <laughs> predicament of Echo, a Danish shoe manufacturer, using an Irish proverb for a Danish company. Okay and retailer with thousands of stores and sales points all over the planet. Our research team discovered an exposed instance hosting a trove of data for Eco. The team has identified that Eco left 50 indices, um, indices exposed to the public with over 60 gigabytes of data accessible since June 2021. Millions of sensitive documents from sales to system information were accessible. Anyone with access could have viewed, edited, copied, and stolen or deleted the data. We reached out to Echo, but received no reply before going to press. However, at the time of publishing, the company appears to have fixed the problem. Our research team recently discovered an exposed instance that hosts Kibana, an Elasticsearch visualization dashboard for Eco. Kibana allows processing of information on Elasticsearch, a storage facility favored by enterprises dealing with large volumes of data. 
even though the instance hosting the dashboard was protected with a basic hypertext transfer protocol authentication. The server was misconfigured and allowed all application programming interface requests through under an umbrella with leaky shoes indeed. The misconfigured authentication allowed us to look up the index names of EcoElasticSearch, revealing 50 exposed indices with over 60 gigabytes of data. The exposed servers contained documents ranging from sales and marketing to logging and system information. According to the team, historical data indicates that the exposed database was left accessible for at least 506 days since June 4th, 2021. Over 35 gigabytes of data was added to the exposed database after the server misconfiguration opened a security hole in Eco Infrastructure. A threat actor could change the visible code, naming and URLs to fish or potentially make victims or employees install unwanted files, such as ransomware loaders or remote access tools on their browsers and devices causing immense damage. The names of indices on the open server should have show that millions of documents were revealed. For example, a directory named sales underscore org contained over 300,000 documents. Another directory titled market specific quality dashboard had over 820,000 records. As the table with exposed indices shows, millions of documents covering various aspects of eco-corporate life were accessible from performance monitoring to information about system status. Social Bleed is an American social media analytics platform. The company disclosed a security breach, a security breach, after a database containing company data was offered for sale on a hacker forum this week. On December 14th, we were notified of a potential data breach whereby an individual had acquired exports of our user database and were attempting to sell it on a hacker forum, reads the data breach notification. Samples were posted and we verified that they were indeed real. It appears this individual made use of a vulnerability on our website to gain access to our database. The seller is offering a database containing 5.6 million records dated September 2022. This company, Social Blade, had 5.6 million customers? Or maybe that 5.6 million is not all customers? Whatever. That's a lot. The data will be sold only to one or two buyers. The seller, Pseudo Creamed, also announced that the sale is covered by the escrow service offered by the breached forum administrators Pump Pump Perrin. Looking for one to two sales, then, th uh, then the thread will be deleted, reads the announcement. The exposed data include email addresses, password hashes, client IDs, IP addresses, and tokens for business API users. Authentication tokens for connected accounts and non-personal and internal data was compromised. The company pointed out that the credit card data was not exposed. The good news is that passwords are hashed using the bcrypt, a hashing algorithm that is considered robust. However, the company recommends users to change their password as a precaution and remain vigilant to recognize phishing attempts. This is not the first time that the social blade infrastructure was breached. In 2016, the company suffered another security breach. TikTok parent company ByteDance revealed that several employees accessed the TikTok data of two journalists to investigate leaks of company information to the company. According to an email from ByteDance, General Counsel Eric Anderson, which was seen by the AFP news agency, the Chinese company was attempting to discover who shared company information with a Financial Times reporter and a former BuzzFeed journalist. The company fired an undisclosed number of employees who were involved in the data leak because they violated the company code of conduct, but it did not reveal their names. In an attempt to discover the location of the unfaithful employees, the Chinese personal personnel analyzed their IP addresses, but this method was approximate. Employees had obtained the IP addresses of the journalist in a bid to determine whether they were in the same location as ByteDance colleagues suspected of disclosing confidential information. A company review of the scheme led by its compliance team and an external law firm found, according to Anderson reporting uh, the AFP. TikTok is going to be banned from most U.S. government devices under a spending bill. Congress review unveiled early uh, last Tuesday. The latest push by American lawmakers against the Chinese-owned social media app, TikTok, would be banned from most U.S. government uh, devices under a spending bill Congress, um, a spending bill that Congress announced last week. CIA Director William Burns said that the Chinese government can insist upon extracting the private data of a lot of TikTok users in this country and also to shape the content of what goes on to TikTok as well as to suit the interests of the Chinese leadership. Brooke Obervetter, a spokesperson for TikTok, said that the ban is a political gesture that will do nothing to advance national security interests. So um, investigating your employees and your users to see if they were in the same vicinity to see who leaked information goes a little bit beyond, I think, um, normal standard practices, but whatever. On December 17, 2022, the Center for Innovations and Development of Defense Technologies, the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, informed the Government Computer Emergency Response Team of Ukraine of being targeted by a malware-based attack. The spear phishing messages were sent from a compromised email address belonging to an employee of the Ministry of Defense, as well as messengers. 
The message urges the recipient to update certificates in the Delta system. It also uses an attached PDF document that imitates legitimate digests of the ISTIR unit of the Zaporizhia Police Department. The Delta is a system for collecting, processing, and displaying information about enemy forces, coordinating of defense source, uh, forces, as well as providing situational awareness according to NATO standards. Developed by the Con Center of Innovation, uh, Center for Innovation and Development of Defense Technologies of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, states the Ukrainian military. According to CERT UA, the document contains a link to a malicious zip archive, certificates underscore root CA, that is hosted on a bogus Delta domain. Upon executing an executable, uh, an executable, Upon executing the executable certificates under root ca.exe included in the archive, it'll install two malware onto the compromised systems. The info stealing malware fate grab used to steal sensitive data, emails, databases, scripts, and download and documents, and the steal deal malware, which steals inter internet browser data. These files are designed to deploy two pieces of malware onto compromised systems, including one named Fate Grab, which harvests email addresses, uh, databases, scripts, or emails, databases, scripts, and documents, and one called Steel Deal, which collects internet, browser, data, and more. If you follow the link to Certificates Root CA zip archive containing the Certificates Root CA execu executable file protected by VM Protect will be downloaded to your computer. The file was compiled and digitally signed on the 15th of December 2022. Reads advisory published by Cert UA. After running the exe file, several DLL files, also protected by VM Protect, and an AIS exe file simulating the certificate installation process will be created on the PC. Later, the two malicious programs will be launched on the victim computer. Reads the alert published by Cert UA. Fate grab. Okay, I'm not going to read all that. Um, I'm not going to read that either. The Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Food and Drug Administration Office of Criminal Invest Investigations, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture have published a joint security advisory to warn of business email compromise attacks leading to the hijack of shipments of food products and ingredients. In BEC attacks, threat actors usually aim at compromising email communications to hijack payments. This time, the attacks target the food and agriculture sector with a different purpose. Attackers impersonate legitimate companies and order food products without paying them or paying for them. According to the U.S. agencies, threat actors have stolen high-valued shipments for, from multiple businesses. Crooks create email accounts and websites mimicking those of a legitimate company. In order to trick the recipients that the account and the addresses are legitimate, attackers add extra letters or words, substitute char substituting characters like one for lowercase uh, l, or use a different top-level domain, such as .org instead of .gov. The victim company fulfills the order and ships the goods, but the criminals don't pay for the products because it's usually done on consignment. Reads the Joint Cybersecurity Advisory. Um, criminals may repackage stolen products for individual sale without regard for uh, food safety regulations and sanitation practices, risking contaminating or contamination or omitting necessary information about ingredients, allergens, or expiration dates. Counterfeit goods of lesser quality can damage a company reputation. Attackers may also gain access to a legitimate company email system to send fraudulent emails. Experts reported that one of the most prevalent techniques used for initial access to IT networks is spear phishing in an attempt to infect the recipient system and access to the network. In order to add legitimacy to the BEC attacks, scammers may use the names of actual officers or employees of a legitimate business to communicate with the victim company. The messages are composed using company logos to appear for, from a legitimate source. The alert also reports that threat actors may also falsify credit applications to trick the victim company into extending credit. The scammer provides the actual information of a legitimate company, so the credit check results in approval of the application. Then the victim ships the product but never receives the payment. The alert also provides details of recent BEC incidents targeting the food and agriculture sector. In August 2022, a U.S. sugar supplier received a request through their web portal for a full truckload of sugar to be purchased on credit. The message contained grammatical errors and appeared to come from a senior officer of a U.S. non-food company. The sugar supplier identified the email address, um, identified the email address that had an extra letter in the domain name and discovered the fraudulent activity by contacting the actual company. Sentinel-1 researchers discovered that the Vice Society ransomware gang has started using a custom ransomware that implements a robust encryption scheme using NTrue Encrypt and ChaCha20 Poly1305 algorithms. Vice Society ransomware has been active since June 2021. It is considered by researchers a spin-off of the Hello Kitty ransomware. The malware targets both Windows and Linux systems, primarily belonging to small or mid-sized victims. 
This group focuses on public school districts and other educational institu institutions like other ransomware gangs. It does implement a double extortion model and publishes data stolen from the victims on a data leak site. The new variant, dubbed PolyVice, was used in a recent attack and appended with the file extension .vice society to all encrypted files. The malware dropped ransom notes with the file name all, all e files AE in each encrypted directory. The researchers speculate the ransomware was in the early stages of development because they found debugging messages in the code. Sentinel-1 noticed a significant overlap with the process implemented in the Red Alert ransomware, a circumstance that suggests that both variants were developed by the same threat actor. Further investigation also revealed that code bases for the uh, Vice Society Windows payload has been used to build custom branded payloads for other ransomware groups such as Chili and Sunny Day. We assess, this is Sentinel-1 speaking, it like, it's likely that a previously unknown developer or group of developers with specialized expertise in ransomware development is selling custom branded ransomware payloads to multiple groups. The details embedded in these payloads make it highly unlikely that Vice Society, Sunny Day, and Chili ransomware are operated by the same group, continues the report. The delivery method for this locker as a service is unclear, but the code design suggests the ransomware developer provides a builder that enables buyers to independently generate any number of lockers decryptors by binary patching a template payload. Buyers can customize the ransomware without revealing any source code and can generate branded payloads to run their own ransomware as a service programs. The encryption scheme used by Polyvice combines asymmetric and symmetric encryption to securely encrypt files. It leverages a quantum resistant N2 encrypt algorithm for asymmetric encryption and an open source implementation of the Cha Cha 20 Poly 1305 algorithm for symmetric encryption. The Polyvice locker implement, implements a multi threading approach to parallelize the encryption process. The malware uses the create thread function to spawn multiple workers and relies on a wait for multiple object call to synchronize with the main thread. The main thread and and the worker threads use an I.O. completion port to exchange data. Polyvice worker reads the file content to determine the speed optimizations to apply, which depend on the file size. The Polyvice ransomware applies intermittent encryption selectively. And that's the news. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already. And smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Get to ride! Farewell!